This investigation we are finding out the story behind the kidnapping of a woman and her sexual assault. We will see this what seems to be one crime, turning into a string of crimes committed by the accuser. The investigation was held for the justice of this one single girl, but as it turns out, that this one girl saved a lot of girls from becoming victims of this monster. During the investigation the girl was lucky to save her life, because otherwise she would have been dead and put in the man's apartment along with the bodies of other girls. Welcome to another gruesome crime scene. To protect the identity of this surviving victim, we are calling the girl Jane. In this video we will talk about how Jane was kidnapped by Sean Great, but luckily she escaped. This is Morbid Network. Videos about crime in every dark corner of the universe. Subscribe to our channel to prepare for the worst. September 13th, 2016. The police receives a 911 call. The caller was a girl who was terrified to wake the abductor, who was asleep at the moment she saw the opportunity to call 911. The girl whispered that she had been kidnapped and was tied up about three feet away from her captor. Jane told police the location where she was held, next to the 4th Street laundromat. She described the physical appearance and told the kidnapper's name. The dispatcher asked the girl if she could escape from the house to which she replied that she could not because she was too afraid she would wake Sean. The kidnapper thought that Jane was tied up, so if he woke up and saw her loose he might do something very dangerous. While talking to the 911 dispatcher, Jane accidentally knocked on Sean's taser and he woke up. After a few minutes of silence, Jane asked the dispatcher how long it would take the police to reach the crime scene. The victim was probably terrified now. She was only minutes away from being the sixth victim of this serial killer. Sean Great was popular as a teenager in Marion, Ohio, especially with the girls. He was charming and always had a smile on his face, which helped to mask his inner anger, jealousy, and simmering violence, at least for a while. Soon, when he was 18 years old, people could have seen the potential serial killer in him, because the kind of actions he began to exhibit then were nowhere near normal. He had broken into many of his ex-girlfriend's homes and tried to suffocate them. He was arrested when he was 18 for grabbing his then-girlfriend by the throat. A few years later, he was arrested for breaking into his girlfriend's house and strangling her. Eight months later, he broke in again, slipped under her couch and hit until the time was right to strike. All this while was holding a butcher knife. But it seems that in later life his charm had not disappeared, because he was still able to attract girls and build their trust in himself. He had three children by three different women. Amber Nicole Bowman, his ex-wife, remembers him saying, If I can't see my daughter, no one will. Sean Great saw women as things to be exploited. Jane knew Sean from playing badminton near her apartment, and once he had earned her trust, Sean turned into the violent monster he had exposed dozens of other women to. He locked her in his apartment and subjected her to days of torture and rape. Jane said she was sexually abused in every conceivable way while her hands were tied and tied to the bed. During the investigation, Sean told her that Jane was a religious girl and that she did not want sexual intercourse before marriage. So he took her to his home. He also constantly blamed the victim and questioned her faith by saying that she believed she should not have sexual intercourse before marriage, but that she agreed to go to his house. Where did he take you from? My, my apartment. I mean, I was walking with him. You were walking with him? Mm -hmm. Where were you walking to? Well, I was known him for like a month and a half. Let's look at the morbid details of the crime scene where Jane escaped. It took about two days. The first night, Sean didn't sleep for a while because he was afraid Jane would escape. The time he left the house, he tied her up so tightly that she couldn't move. He did not even allow Jane to go to the bathroom without accompanying her. When he went to sleep, he made it so she couldn't go to the bathroom herself, that it would make noise. Jane, as soon as Sean did go to sleep, freed herself from being tied up to make the 911 call. The victim did not eat or drink anything during these two days. 
On the second day of the abduction, Sean finally fell asleep, giving his victim a chance to save her life. When police reached the scene, they freed the girl out of the house who was not wearing any clothes at the time and was freezing cold. The kidnapper, Sean Great, was arrested and taken for questioning. After the arrest, Sean was asked questions about Jane and also about Elizabeth, another girl that went missing a month ago and had been in contact with Sean Great. This was the point of investigation that revealed the more brutal face of Sean. This person who sat quietly in the chair and answered the investigators' questions was nothing but an imposter and it turned out to be a horrific serial killer. When Sean was asked about the other missing girl Elizabeth, the investigators saw a change in his body language and tone. Now, the patrol guys are saying you know Aunt Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Um, met her one time outside. Played some badminton. And I was playing badminton and then Elizabeth come outside, talk to us. He was very reluctant to talk about her and kept trying to change the subject. At that point, detectives knew that this person had something to do with Elizabeth. Sean was questioned by Detective Kim Major of the Ashland Police Department. Sean's monotonous confession during this interrogation left authorities and the local community shocked. He told the detective that he had two dead women in his house. The bodies were later found in the house, one in the closet and another in the basement. And one body was identified as Elizabeth Griffith. The 29-year-old girl was said to have mental problems. While the detective asked him about Elizabeth, he kept saying that he had given her the peace she wanted. During the interrogation, Great confessed to another murder of 29-year-old Candace Cunningham. He had strangled her after going out with her for a while. You lie all the time. Okay. What is she in? She's in the woods? Okay. How long has she been there? June. June? Okay. And she's the one that scratched you like that? All right, what's her name? Candace. Candace? Cunningham. Cunningham? I found her house and I took her to the woods. Okay. Why'd you put her in the woods? Because you're afraid? Huh? Were you afraid? Is that why you put her in the woods? He took authorities to the wooded area about 12 miles from Ashland where he dumped her body. In the interrogation room, he also confessed to killing 31-year-old girl Rebecca Leacy. The victim had problems with drugs and had been reported missing in 2015. Three months after Leacy was reported missing, her body was found by an employee of a natural gas company, a few miles from Ashland. The body was pretty well preserved, but some animals had gotten hold of it said David Schur, a detective with the Mansfield Police Department. DNA, dental records, and tattoos were used to identify her. Sean told the detective that he paid Rebecca for sex in an abandoned building, but they ended up in a fight and she tried to tear him apart. He said she kept fighting and tried to leave. He said he tried to hold her there and then boom, he put her to sleep. He made sure she was dead by strangling her. This serial killer admitted to even more morbid crimes. He admitted the murder of 23-year-old Dana Lowry, who went missing in Marion Country in 2005. Later in 2017, the decomposed remains of the body were found about a mile from Great's home. I back her out, I turn her around, she comes towards me, I knock her hands around, knock her whole body around and just grabbed her like she just was meant to be choked out. Sean confessed to kidnapping and killing her, saying he dumped the body and removed all her personal belongings. After which he burned her. Great had met Dana when she was selling magazines. Sean pleaded guilty to a total of 15 charges including robbery and kidnapping. He was found guilty. Before his sentencing, he expressed his fear of the death penalty. He said, I would really like to stay alive through all of this, he told police officers. Chillingly, he also said, I would have liked to be able to do a lot, but I know I wouldn't have gotten away with it. June 1, 2018, Sean murdered at least five women in three Ohio counties between 2006 and 2016. Sean was sentenced to death. Sean's recent application to reopen his death penalty case has been denied by the Ohio Supreme Court. 
Sean is scheduled to be executed in 2025. Everyone should always be aware of the person they are dating. Because there are a lot of Sean greats out there. Living their lives freely in the world and destroying people's lives and not getting caught. If you love these videos, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. These videos will also help you recognize some opportunities in people's personality so that you consider them as red flags and could save your life.